So welcome to uh, part 13 of my Core XY build. Um, hope that's not unlucky. Um, so the panels that I ordered uh, arrived. So they're just um, one and a half mil thick, plain aluminium. It's polished, so it looks quite nice. That's about the cheapest thing I could find that would still meet the uh, wife approval uh, rating. So they're just bolted to the um, to the frame using T nuts. Um, so I position the T nuts around the frame using slot cover um, that I explained in a previous video and then I just had to drill holes in the panels to for the bolts that would line up with the T-nuts. Um, so they've gone on well, it looks okay. My measurements were obviously right and I managed to uh, cut them to the measurements. Uh, the only thing is they do tend to rattle a bit. It wouldn't normally be an issue but because um, as I've explained before that's my bedroom um, it's got to be quiet so I've ordered some sound deadening. Uh, I've got some self-adhesive tape that I can stick around the frame which is kind of spongy it's about one and a half mil thick so it will sit against that rather than the frame itself and I've also ordered some um, I don't really know what you call them acoustic self-adhesive acoustic panels that what they use on the inside of motorhomes and vans and so forth to stop panels from sort of reverberating and booming so I'll stick them on and that should sort that out anyway here's some here's some pictures of it as it is You can see I put the door, uh, drawer front on it as well, um, so I painted that blue and stuck some handles. I didn't want knobs that would stick out, so they're kind of foldy handles. You, you'd lift them up and then pull on the drawer. So the other aluminium panels are, are polished. I don't think they're coated with anything. They came with a protective coating uh, that sort of peels off. Um, so I'm guessing they will probably oxidise over time and go dull. So I've ordered some um, Everbright, which is... Um, which should keep them uh, bright and shiny. So that's that. Um, I've also put some uh, desiccant in the uh, filament chamber, the Perspex box that sits around the filament. Uh, I've got some uh, act activated alumina um, and I bought some little, they're actually tea infusers, just stainless steel um, perforated cylinders with lids. Um, I'll probably take the lids off when it's in the chamber, but and then just put some activated alumina in there. So it works a bit like silica gel, but I'm told it works a bit better. That can be reactivated by chucking it in the oven at about 200 degrees C, something like that. So that will go in with the Sunday roast <laughs> now and again. So it's about done, apart from, you know, uh, there are always a few little bits and bobs to do. Um, so one thing I wanted to know was how long it would run in the event of a power cut on these little 7 amp hour batteries. So I don't want to completely deplete the batteries because that won't do them any good. What I've been able to find out, a 12 volt battery will be about 50% discharged when its voltage is 12.2 according to reliable sources on the internet that is um, so 12.2 because i've got two in series giving uh, that max 24.4 so i'm thinking i shouldn't really run the batteries any less than 24.4 volts so i wanted to, to see how long i could run the printer before the batteries got down to 24.4 which would be about 50 percent depleted so i set up a dummy print um, and just uh, well it's, it's an actual print but I just uh, took the filament out and ran it without any filament because I just I, I didn't want to waste filament just in case so if the battery voltage gets too low um, there's an automatic cutout that will cut them off anyway so I'd lose the print so I did a little video of that test and here is that
So as you see, um, quite surprisingly, um, the, the battery, 
the voltage when it's charging the voltage is 27.6 when you immediately turn off the power it drops to sort of 25 and a half and then it drops um, fairly quickly to about 24.8 and then it decays from there on very slowly and it actually takes pretty much an hour to get to 24.4 volts and the battery is only uh, 7 7.5 amp hour I think that's 7.5 amp hour each but that's at 12 volts so it's still 7.5 amp hours at 24 volts because they're in series not in parallel so I can run them for an hour as you might notice in the video after an hour the bed temperature gets to 39 degrees it started off 65 so depending on the part and the filament there's a chance that that the um, the part might have come off the bed anyway but if it's a fairly big print with quite a big footprint um, it probably it'll probably stay put but a small part with a small footprint might well come off but yeah the majority of um, power outages we get a a very short lived just a, a few minutes so the the test was um it was for PETG around about 230 degrees um print speed of 75 millisecond i think it was or 80 something like that so yeah the um so the hour run time if it was melting filament then the hot end heater would work a bit harder so it might be maybe 50 minutes rather than an hour when it switches over to battery power obviously because the bed isn't heated anymore because that's the mains heater then it starts to cool so i have to use a really wide heater fault parameters i have to set them really wide normally it's like five degrees for three minutes or something and then it will generate a heater fault um, but obviously running on battery it can drop 30 degrees so what i used to do before um, which I need to do again is when it switches over to battery I turn the heater off turn the main heater off because it's effectively off anyway or set really wide heater fault tolerance parameters and then when uh, mains power is restored I can either turn the heater back on um, or close those tolerances down again and what I used to do I had um, the DC UPS has got a pair of contacts that um, that make when the battery's discharging, but they're not making at the moment. And I think the reason is when I looked at the spec, the batteries have to discharge at least two amps. And I think it did that on my Core XY UVAB because I had three gantries going, so it was probably drawing more than two amps. This one, just because it's only got the X and Y motors and a relatively small 50 watt <laughs> hot end heater, um, probably isn't drawing two amps, so those contacts aren't making. So what I'll probably do is monitor the battery voltage using an, either the ESP32 that I've got or another one. Um, and then, so I can, I can tell when, it, when the mains power fails, the voltage will drop below 27 or 26 whatever some some number there because it's normally 27.6 so when it drops below let's say 26 it will know that the mains has failed and bear in mind the esp32 runs off a of 5 volt which is derived from the 24 which is powered by the battery so i know that the battery's failed and it and i can use that as an external trigger to the duet balls to either turn off the mains bed heater or widen the fault tolerances for it and then what I can do is have another trigger that the ESP will generate when it gets to 24.4 or just below um, and set that as a trigger to do it and then I can use that to do a controlled shutdown a controlled pause and then when power comes back on I could resume the print providing the part hasn't fallen off the bed so something like that anyway because I can't use the contacts on the UPS because they don't seem to be uh, triggering unless it's gone faulty but I think it's because it's not discharging at 2 amps so I think that'll wrap it up for this one I have done my first um, semi-serious print um, but I'll, I'll just do a separate video showing that so thanks for watching and as ever um, Hope you found something interesting or useful or whatever and uh, see you next time.
Bye.